This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 4, verse 28. And it reads, Strive for the truth unto death. And the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim al shall fight for thee. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 12. And it reads, in both, I'll read in both the KJV and NLT versions. This is the KJV. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil, which is Esau, Edom, that old serpent, the self-acclaimed white man, his people, the higher-ups, his elites, that shall soon come down with draconian laws and measures against the people to push forward their agenda, their new world order. Because devil just goes uh, uh, into deceiver or slanderer. And <laughs> they're going to make the people feel so alienated that they're going to consciously uh, uh, take this MOTB, fall into their system. I'd be taken by it. And also they're going to be uh, deceiving the people into taking the MOTB, the mark of the beast. But the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. Revelation 12 and 12 in LT. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who live in the heavens. See, we're not of this world. We're not in this world anymore. We can't be of it. Okay? We're... Uh, we, we have made our home where Yahweh Bashimashai is. Our home is not of this world. We're pilgrims on earth, and we're going to have to be pilgrims in that time. Let me get that real quick. Uh, second Idris 1640, and I'm, and I'm also going to get it in the modern translation. It reads, Second Idris 1640, Oh, my people, hear my word. Make you ready to die battle, because it's going to be a test, a great testing. And in those evils... Be even as pilgrims upon the earth. It says, but terror, this is Revelation 12 and 12, but terror will come on the earth and the sea, which represents the nations, peoples, tongues. For the devil, Esau, Edom, the power structure, the powers that be, and their laws that they're going to pass to bring this into fruition, I to trap the people in the net like fishes and to snare the people like birds before it for it is an evil time. For the devil has come down to you in great anger, knowing that he has little time. You see? Now let's get that in the modern translation. Okay, we're going to go to 40. And then we're going to get this lesson started. This is 2nd Edger 16 and 40 in NL, NLT or modern translation, GNTA. Listen to my message, my people, and get ready for the battle. When the disasters come, you must live as people whose home is not in this world. That's why I read in the modern translation or the NLT of Revelation 12 and 12. It says, therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who live in them. See, our mind, our spirit is out of Babylon. It's not in this world anymore. It's in the heavens. Is where Yahweh Shai is. Okay, we're dead with him so that we may also reign with him. And with that, giving all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh Bashim al Shai. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father in whom the world is really called Jehovah. Or Yahweh and Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten Son in whom the world has really called Jesus Christ in whom we do worship. We are the Hebrew Israelites, which consists of you so called Negroes, Latinos, Native American, and Seminole Indians to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings, giving double honors. Unto my apostles, my elders, and my teachers at Great Millstone that are ruling well and continue to do so. Salutations, peace, and blessings unto the hopeful elect, that house of David. To you brothers out there fighting this good fight of faith, keep it up. To you sisters doing that which is becoming of women, shalom. And to those that are addicted unto this ministry, I say, shalom, Lord's willing. This is an edifying lesson. Double honors unto our apostles and elders at Great Millstone that are ruling well, as it is written, that continue in the ministry, that are worthy of double honor, that have given us the two most important things we can ever know, the name of the Heavenly Father and the name of His only begotten Son, their true and proper names in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew, our language, the Lashwan Kodash, which means holy tongue. Lashwan meaning tongue and Kodash meaning holy. These be the names that are written. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yah, meaning He. Hawa, 
meaning exists or is or is to be. He is, he exists. He, the existing one, for he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. And in the name of his only begotten son, a name that is above every name given amongst men here on earth to the Israelite man first and also to the believer consisting of women, children, helps of the prophets and those that have faith. They will be calling upon that name, even that mighty name, the name Yahawashai. Yah, meaning he, Yahawashai, meaning deliverer and savior. For that is exactly what he will come and do for the second time in physical form, yet as an angelic force, for we shall see him as he is, and we shall be like him. All right? And Lord's willing, this is an edifying lesson. And Lord's willing, I call this lesson testing, tragedy, triumph. Okay? Many will fall. Well, we will all go through the test, the testing. Many will fall to tragedy and be destroyed, melted, left here in this land and melted. Okay? Because they took part with the devil and will fall with him as lightning. We beheld Satan fall as lightning. Okay? That's how quickly this, this place is going to be decimated and destroyed. The Lord's going to destroy the whole land and make a speedy riddance of all that dwell in it and, and sweep them away with the beast of destruction in a moment. All right? At midnight, which represents nuclear holocaust, all right, the doomsday clock, they said they were destroyed in a moment, okay, without hand. That's what's going to happen to these people that uh, fall into the trap and are killed. But that's going to be the tragedy of it. And then you have triumph. The elect will triumph in this time because the Lord knows whom are his. So without further ado, hey, let's get right into it. Let's go to the book of. We'll go to the book. Of. Oh, Isaiah. Let's get it. Uh, Jaws. Jaws. We're going to get that. Bear with me, brother. We're going to get that. Okay, Isaiah 30, 28. Yeah. And then we're going to get um, in the online etamon. We're going to get both tragedy and conspiracy. All right, because, hey, you got these clowns out here and you conspiracy nuts. But let's go into the word. All right, genius. Let's go into the word. You can throw out all these these, these words, but let's let's understand, okay? So you just got clowns that really don't understand and they're just dummies at a goddamn first grade level. All right, and they grown men. They're just dummies. And they just throw out words and that throws people off because people don't study them going to words. But here over here at Great Millstone, Hey, according to our apostles and elders, we study, just as the scriptures say, studies to show thyself approved, rightly to divide in the word of truth, not ashamed, okay? And from our apostle, Elder Gabar, okay, which his name means warrior, all right? Hey, warriors have to study the battlefield, they have to study their enemies, they have to study the terrain, know themselves. So we go into words, and it makes us understand our enemy, understand the terrain, understand what's coming, see the world through uh, the Bible, we have a biblical lens, and that's how we look at the world. Now, let's go into the word tragedy real real quick. Because many, many people will, will fall into this. I don't know why I didn't come up. Tra Maybe I didn't spell it right. Tra tra Bear with me, brothers. Oh, no, no, is that a tragedy? There we go. I was way off. All right, tragedy. Okay, it says, play or other serious literary work with an unhappy ending. See, this is all written. The scriptures is, is known as the scriptures because everybody has to play their role. The script, we're going to have to, hey, hey, it's going to be the righteous playing their role and the wicked playing their role. And all the people found in the middle, are going to have to play their role. All right, it says play or other serious literary work with an unhappy ending. It's going to be a happy ending for the elect, but an unhappy ending for the ungodly and sinners and the wicked. Okay? That's it. Meaning unhappy, event, disaster. Okay? 
Hmm. Said a goat saw him, right? A lot of you people are gonna be be destroyed like a goat. A goat screams out and he's yelling when he's about to be sacrificed, but a lamb lays down and, and accepts. See? But you people are gonna be as a uh, uh, Hey, the Lord has a great sacrifice in Bozrah. So you those goats, mainly Esau, eat them. You have rams, which represents the tribes, or, or the, the heathen. And you have lambs, represents the tribes. The Lord has a great sacrifice. All right, and you have this uh, goat means the greatest of all time. Well, this is going to be the greatest destruction of all time upon Babylon. And upon all you people that uh, uh, take part in this man's beast system is going to be destroyed. And given to the burning flame, as it is uh, mentioned in another place. Now, let's go to conspiracy. Let's get to scripture. Boom, there it is. Boom. Now, let's go back to the scripture. And we're going to get it up top as well. Let's go there. Let's go to. And I'm going to play this clip. All right. Boom. Isaiah 30 and 28. Hopefully the blue letter gets it on point for the NLT. Okay, 28. Let's read it in the uh, KJV first. And it reads, And his breath, as an overflowing stream, shall reach to the midst of the neck. All right, because when you have somebody at the neck, you have them at your mercy. It says, To sift the nations... Right, because they're gonna put uh, this is gonna come upon all the world to try them a test, right? With the sieve of vanity, so it's gonna shake up the world. This man, uh, order out of kale, uh, a pressure from above, pressure from below. He's gonna shake up the world with his madness, right? With vanity, things that don't profit nothing, and he's gonna sift the nations with that. Esau eat them, and there shall be a bridal. In the jaws of the people. Now, when you put a bridle into an animal's mouth, whether it be a horse, a mule, uh, an oxen, you're controlling the animal. You steer whatever direction you want it to go. How are they going to control the people? Even with the MOTB, the mark of the beast. Causing them to, what? Err. See? So this hot breath pours out like a flood because he's going to send his military might to force a... Uh, 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 What's the, what's the word? Uh, what's the saying? Force the, uh, damn, how does it go? Pretty much force his hand or or first or force the, uh, damn, it's right on my tongue. Man, how does it go? Uh, pretty much for, force uh, the course of events, all right, that he wants the people to fall into. All right, they're going to fall by his mighty ones, his strong ones, so to speak. His hot breath pours out like a flood upon up to the necks of his enemies. Because this, this man, Esau Edom, sees you nations as goyim enemies. But he's going to seem like he's the good guy that wants to help. But he really wants to destroy you. And by peace, destroy many. Now, this happened during the time of Antiochus Epiphanes. But this same spirit is back. All right? Instead of Hellenizing the world, they're going to C-H-I-P the world. Chip the world. Just say it like that. Whatever. You know, they can come for me if they want. Who gives a damn? He will sift out the proud nations for destruction. Now, ultimately, this chip, all right, this 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 test is ultimately from the Lord. This is how the Lord is going to sift while using Esau, Edom as that instrument. All right, the proud nations for destruction that want to take part in this new digital system. Being proud as hell against the Lord, they're going to be destroyed anyway. He will bridle them and lead them away to ruin. See that? You take this, you're done. You're dead. Okay? Now, you go into breath, right? Let's go into the work in spirit. It says, his hot breath pours out like a flood. Let's get the word conspiracy and see what it means. Conspiracy. Now, person, place, a thing. A plotting of evil. Unlawful design. A combination of persons, see, for an evil purpose. Let's go into the word. It says literally, when you go to the uh, agreement, union, unanim un unanimous or unanimity, noun of the action from past participles, stem of consp conspire conspirare, to agree, unite, plot, literally to 
breathe together. So this hot breath. See, in anger, he's going to come down with great wrath. But it's a, an, a, a, an agreement or a union. And they're breathing together. They're, they're putting life where there was no life before. They, they, they uh, uh, gave life to the beast. Let me get the gave life. Life. Let's get it real quick. Then we're going to get what, what brothers are going to have to suffer. Where we at on? Not bad. Play this clip. Thirteen, yep. Revelation thirteen fifteen, and he, the he being Esau, Edom, his high high elites. All right, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, put pretty much to breathe breath into it, to make it come alive where there was no life before. That the image of the beast should both speak. See now, now when you're alive, you're speaking, you're talking, right? And calls that as many, excuse me, as would not worship the image of the beast, which is his power structure, his system, his way. That as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, pretty much literally killed or cut off from society and, and made to die, made to to survive beyond. I right, killed pretty much being cut off. All right. Um, those that once had an agreement or once was attached to something has now severed that. And that's exactly what he's going to do to those that resist. He's going to sever them from society and cut them off. But the elect is going to be fine because we're no longer going to stay on him that smote us, but trust in the Lord our power in truth. Okay. So, okay, let's go to, to the modern translation of Second Idris 16. We're going to go down to the point of these uh, troopers. Look at that. Sit still. And play this clip. Bear with me, brothers. Bear with me. Sit still. Because many of our people are going to go down to Egypt for help and be decimated and destroyed and confined and confounded and confused and bugged out and hurt. But you trusted in this demon. You trusted in man. You put uh, more hope in the flesh. And made flesh your arm. Alright. Okay. Mm. Second Edges 16, 67. How is your judge? So fear him. Abandon your sins. Put away the evil you have done and never sin again. Then Yahweh Bashamashra will save you from all these disasters. That's what the elect is gonna do. We're gonna put away all the madness and be with the Lord. Now I'm gonna play this clip. Before I do Isaiah 30 and 7. For the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore have I cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still, to do nothing. Alright? Egypt's promises are worthless. Therefore I call her Rahab, because this is the, the mother of harlots. The harmless dragon now. They're not going to do anything because uh, it's going to be a conscious decision that you make. But the draconian or dragon like laws that they're going to pass is going to put you into a place of no return. A squeeze. And you're going to be forced to. Pretty much walk to your end. Man, it says a vast mob of people. This is a. Uh, Second edge 16 and 68. GNTA, a vast mob of people is ready now to descend on you. These armies, these troopers, to uh, to force the issue. That's what that's what I wanted to get early to force the issue. It says, a vast mob of people is is ready now to descend on you and devour you like flames. They will drag some of you off and force you to eat pagan sacrifice. Now in the ancient world, they will force you to eat pagan sacrifices, do things that are contrary to our law. As they did during the time of the Greeks, sacrificing the swine on the altar, forcing our people to eat the madness. But now they're going to force something inside you that's against our law, just as tasting of uh, defiled meats and pagan uh, uh, sacrifices. Now you're going to literally sacrifice your body. Instead of making your body a living sacrifice to the Lord, you're going to sacrifice your body to Esau, Edom, and his uh, invasive device that will destroy you in the end. 
because now you have defiled the Lord's temple and he shall devour your flesh. You all right? They desecrated the temple of Yahweh, and Yahweh shall desecrate their flesh. Yahweh Bashimashah is going to desecrate your bodies. All you Jakes that get this madness, you're going to be destroyed. If you give in to them, 69, they will ridicule you, mock you, and humiliate you before you're in. Because they're going to know, well, you know, they're Edomites or other heathen. They're going to be like, well, we're already done. Or they're going to think, oh, well, we're not like you people. You people are done. All right? But our people are going to be ashamed and through, and they're going to have a, a, a sore, a grievous sore. So without further ado, we'll play this clip. Shalom. Okay, sick. What's happening? With you guys? We'll be having a drink together in no time, eh? Good soldiers. Full of orders. You are. Orders. A good soldier, Tom. It appears this clone has developed a ah! tumor. I can't believe it. I gotta kill it. It will be a painless death. So that others like him could survive. There aren't others like him. It's not a number. None of us are. But how can we proceed? Do your biopsy. I'm sure what you find will prove Tup does not have to die. What have you done? You've saved my friend's life. All of us, even the Jedi, are in grave danger. Give me that. You can't be trusted. You don't understand. It's gonna be fine. Yeah, I promise. General, I have evidence. It's right here. The big ship broke his Soldiers, the mission, soldiers, what is he saying? What mission? The soldiers, you know the one. The, the mission, soldiers, the one in our dreams, it never ends. On our dreams, our brother, soldiers, for our borders. Soldiers, for what was he talking about? Is the end? Soldiers, for our borders. Forget the mission, you are a good soldier, top of the nightmare. You are. Good soldier, top. No, I have to talk to General Skywalker and Rex directly. Now I'm gonna stop right there, but. See how he's on that the operating table. Got this demon Elon Musk doing these trials or whatever. Best believe people are dying and then others are being successful. And then you see how he said, uh, you know, you know, the mission, not, the, the nightmares that never ends. Like people are having dreams about this. People are having dreams about these camps and detention centers and people lining up and dying and being beheaded and uh, uh, lands being on fire and, and, and bombs falling. This is all happening, and people are like, what is he talking about? What is he saying? Like, But we've been saying this. The apostles and elders, all right, been saying this. Brothers have been saying that We had a whole year um, uh, given to this very topic. All right, if you ain't getting it now, you're listening to these other groups, then you're lost, and you're an idiot, and you're going to be destroyed. All right, but yeah, you got Esau talking about it. You got Bible Belt uh, believers talking about it. You got these other nations talking about it. This is where the world is going. All right. And then these soldiers, a lot of these military men have these already implanted in them so they can uh, uh, execute the order. Good soldiers follow orders. All right. You know, they're not going to be themselves as we're going to read here. This is our second hundred sixteen and 70 in many places near the cities. There will be violent persecutions against those who fear the Lord, the attackers. Now we can read it in the modern uh the actual uh, old English, it said, madmen spare none. Madmen being meaning that they're crazy. But they're not going to, it ain't going to be of their own mind or merit. It's going to be uh, that, that brain chip controlling their ass. It says, the attackers will act like wild people. They will plunder and destroy without pity all those who still fear the Lord. This is going to be an attack on Jake. Hence, Jacob's trouble. Let's play this. That's ultimately what Esau even wants to do. He wants to take out anybody that knows anything about the truth. He said, they frame me because I know the truth. He said, it goes all the way to the top. All right? So this thing goes all the way to the top. This is, this is the plan of Esau eating. What plan? He's like, he's like, the chance was incapable of what you're talking about. He is. 
Because the most people don't think Esau Edom is capable of this. It's not really his CHIP, it's the Lord's to test the world to see where they at. But yet he's given Esau all this power to, to bring it to pass. He's given him the tools to do it. All right? And he's doing it. And he's going to do it. Hence the Lord created this man for the day of evil. He created all things for himself, including the wicked, for the day of evil. All right, once the Lord uses him, then he's going to discard his ass. But it goes to show you, it goes all the way to the top. It's like, what plan? There's a chance he's capable of what you're talking about. But he is. He's like, you don't believe me. And you people don't believe us here now. A lot of you don't. A lot of you Israelites don't. But you will when you see it. And they're they trying to silence us just like you seen in the clip. My man got shot, you know. They're trying to silence us, but hey, it's going to come to pass. All right, what we've been, what we've been speaking, what we've been talking about. But praise ye Yahweh by Shema Shai for those that will listen. All right? Because it's about to get real out here. It says, verse 72, they will turn them out of their homes, our people, and take away all their possessions. You shall own nothing and be happy. You're going to enter the new world. All right, everything's going to change. This is the turning point. This will be the time of testing for my chosen people. And they will prove to be as pure as refined gold, the elect. Okay? But listen to what the Lord, Yahweh Bashimasha, says. My chosen people, the time of terrible suffering is near, but I will rescue you. Pretty much he will deliver us from the same, as you read it in the, uh, the, the King's English. Okay? And I believe... Oh, yeah, that's pretty much it. But before we get there, let's go to Revelation 3. We're going to have to, uh, all right, sit in. You know, some of us going to be in them camps and then detention centers. But let's go to the King's English of it. I like how it's worded. It's being idle, being offered to things given, given to idols. Here we go. There we go. Second Edges 16 and 68, 4. Behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude, these soldiers, is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you. Because that's all I, why a lot of people won't get the, the CHIP because they want to eat. All right? Being idle now, you're going to be in a stationary place, a detention center, a determined camp, a re-education uh, center, with things offered unto idols pretty much. You're going to be giving your, yourself over to another God. Esau, Edom as your God, his system as a God, AI as a God, whatever the hell. That's going to be your power, your own belly. But you ain't going to be uh, for the Lord. Now, the Lord's men are going to eat while you starve. They're going to drink while you're thirsty. They're going to rejoice while you are ve uh, vexed in your mind. Now, you have idol means to be stationary in one place. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot. Now it says being idle, you're in a stationary place. Men of the Lord may be in that very same uh, predicament, but the Lord is going to free them. Revelation 3 and 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, suffering, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, the time of testing, which shall come upon all the world. To try them that dwell upon the earth. Whew. See that? Lord's gonna keep us all right from this hour, which means He's gonna uh, tend to us carefully, the elect, and we're gonna do what the Lord has required us to do. So let's get this word uh, keep. Ain't gonna make this too much longer. You know, get these points. We're gonna go to Revelation 13 and we're gonna end it there. Bear with me, brothers. Okay. Bear with me, brothers. Okay. Oh, went too far. Yep, first John five and four. For whatsoever is born of Yahweh overcometh the world, 
And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. We're going to have faith in our God and our power. And we're no longer going to stay on him that smote us with a continual stroke. So we're going to stay on the Lord, our power and truth. Because that's how we're going to be killed. Those that were not a uh, worship image of the beast should be killed. Now, some of us are going to be beheaded and actually taken back to the spirit realm, but risen first when Yahushua arrives. But a lot of us are going to be killed in the sense of being cut off from society. What good is dead? You know, that's the saying. Oh, your good is dead if you go out there. So pretty much people are like, you're an idiot for not even, you know, you're going to die out there. Not necessarily. <laughs> like Moses, when he fled from Egypt, he was in that desert, should have died out there, but he didn't. The Lord was with him to lead him to Midian, to, uh, to get with Jethro, to uh, eventually marry his daughter, to have his seeds. And then the Lord came and talked with him and sent him back to Egypt to deliver our people. So ne not necessarily will we die out in the wilderness, okay, because the Lord is going to uh, keep us. And this is the word keep in the Greek. G5083, Tereo, <clears throat> Tereo. It says to attend to carefully. That's what the Lord is going to do for us. Take care of to guard. Because Michael's going to have to stand up. It's going to get that bad that we're going to be hunted down, uh, you know, uh, uh, tracked, traced. They're going to try and track and trace us, because, but we're going to be off the grid. So they're going to send mercenaries, soldiers, all right, um, what is it, uh, bounty hunters, drones, robots, terminators. Uh, for us, but then the Lord gonna lift up a standard when they shall come in like a flood, and we gonna we gonna give them the business through the spirit and power of the Lord. You must believe this. All right, it says uh, metaphorically to keep one in the state in which he is. So we're in a cool state. We we have enough. We have our daily bread, as the Lord's prayer states. We have everything we need, and the Lord is gonna amp up that that particular prayer. He's gonna keep us where we're at. We were good. And the Lord's going to keep us good. While everybody else suffers and fades away and falls out, we're going to be good. It says to observe, the Lord's going to look over us, watch us, to reserve, to undergo something. We're going to have to go through these same troubling times, but we will be without sin. We're going to be with the Lord. It says, a watch, perhaps akin to, to guard from loss or injury properly by keeping the eye upon and thus differing from which is properly to prevent escaping and from which implies a fortress or full military lines of apparatus. We're going to have the angels with us. We're going to have the fortress. With the, we're going to be uh, um, in the Lord. The Lord is our hiding place, our fortress, our place of refuge. Okay. I.e. to note a prophecy because this has to come to pass. And the Lord said he's going to keep his. He knows his chosen. And they're going to be tried like gold. Figuratively to fulfill a command. By implication to detain. The Lord's going to have us in his custody. We're going to be safe from all the outside dangers. Just as Jeremiah was in the prison. When the Babylonians were sacking Jerusalem. He was in the best place he could be. And then Nebuchadnezzar himself. Told the captain of his guard. Go find the prophet Jeremiah. And free him. All right, you might be in the, the prison camp. And uh, hey, through the spirit, the guard right there might believe, be a Jake, and free you. Or an angel come get you out like, like Peter was broke out by the angel. Or the earth can shake and quake and, and you can be loose from your uh, captivity or, or the custody they have you in. Or, or, or the, the, the detained room that you're in. It says figuratively to maintain by extension to withhold for personal ends. See, the Lord is going to keep us around. To bless us for his own uh, personal ends. Figuratively, to keep unmarried. We're not going to be married to this system. We're, we're married unto the Lord. We're going to wait for his return. And when the Lord returns, that's when the marriage is going to be. The consummation of the marriage, us actually becoming one with our power, being taken up with him, going into the chamber. We're going to be unmarried to this system. Because we're already betrothed to the Lord, so we're not going to be uh, a harlot. We ain't going to get... Uh, Shot up. We ain't going to have somebody stick something in us like a man sticks his rod into a woman. And if it's not his woman, then he uh, committed an offense. And he's supposed to be put to death and the woman. But we're going to be like the woman that cries out because we don't want to get stuck by this demon. All right. We're already uh, promised to the Lord. This is by extension to withhold for personal ends, figuratively to keep 
unmarried, so we're not going to be married to this system. We're going to uh, completely be break, broken away from it. All right? And that's our victory over this world, even our faith that we have in Mashiach Yahushai. Okay? Let's get up out of there, and we're going to go to Revelation 13. We're going to go to the commentary real quick, see what they got to say, which they've been listening to us, and death and destruction to your other groups. Seriously. May you be destroyed, you clowns, thinking that you're going to be safe with this clown Esau. He's a human just like you, dummy. All right? And the Lord don't like him, but then you're going to side with this clown and think the Lord going to be with you. All right, you're, you're done. The hell up out of here. All right? For you not telling our people the truth. At least we are telling them the truth is out there. You, you do, you take it, you're done. You don't take heed, you're out of there. What more can we say? What more can we do? We've done our job. We wiped the blood off our hands. We blew the trumpet to make all ready, but none go to the battle. But yet the Lord told us, hey, be ready for the battle. All right? And be even as pilgrims upon the earth in these, in these evils. Oh, no, it's uh, David Guzik tripping. No, Matthew Henry, David Guzik. I know I go to that dude a lot, but it's uh, David Guzik goes into it. But yeah, it's, it's, all right, there we go. We'll go to the point. 13 and 16. Bear with me, brothers. All right, there you go. Start. Boom. Start right there. Revelation 13 and 16 through 17. The economic strategy of the first beast, which is ancient Rome. All right. Just as you, you watch these ancient world shows, you got Spartacus, you got uh, uh, this this new show uh, that recently came out, Those Who Are About to Die. It was showing you the decay of Rome. It was showing you uh, uh, the migrant situation in ancient Rome, where you had these these uh, vassal states that were conquered by the Romans and made to, to, to uh, serve the Romans' ends. A lot of their citizens were, were uh, flooding into Rome and getting jobs and, and trades and stuff like that. And the Roman citizens themselves were being left behind. All right. And there was a, a lot of dangers without these different places that were subdued, still was uh, fighting and wanted to wage war against Rome. Rome had to send more and more legions and the money system was devaluing. All right. They had uh, just subdued uh, Judea. And those wars kind of put them back. Even though they were uh, victorious over our people, that, that put Rome back uh, uh, in a sense. They, they were kind of through. Then not too long after that, Mount Vesuvius erupted and destroyed a certain uh, other um, hub of, of commerce. And, and, and then Rome just started going down after that. And the last Roman emperor that was Edomite was Domitian. And after that, that's when Jake rose up. And then the Western Roman Empire, after a while, completely fell for that thousand year period and Jake took over. But now this Roman Empire is back under uh, NATO and the EU that was established in 1957 or, or, or brought to pass in 1957, established in 1958, brought into the ears and minds of the people in 1956 under the, uh, the European Economic Community that had to rebuild after World War II. Because Europe was completely decimated, it had to come together, and uh, the 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 whore riding the beast, the head of of NATO was America, and as a conglomerate, they came together to combat the increasing uh, uh, movements of the Russians. All right, and have been a powerhouse since that time, but now they're bringing back this Roman way. All right, and you go into the ancient world shows, especially Spartacus. It, every time the Romans came up against the barbarians or or people that weren't Romans, they were like, the shadow of Rome is vast, and you shall yet see yourself die under it. So that shadow of Rome is stretching everywhere, okay? This this new system, all right, this digital system is the shadow, which represents protection, but it said, war unto our people that go down to Egypt for help, and trusting in the shadow of Pharaoh. It's going to be their confusion and their shame, trusting in the protection, the shadow of Egypt, of Rome, you're going to be destroyed and confounded. We're going to trust in the Lord, our power, the elect. This is the economic strategy of the first beast and the second beast that was revived. It came back. 
He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark, M-A-R-K, the M-O-T-B, C-H-I-P, on their right hand, no, in their right hand. This says on right here. This bug dies, is really in. Okay, when you read the actual verse, in. Or in their foreheads, a brain chip, Elon Musk, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name going into the uh, universal product code. The name of the man was uh, George Joseph Laura, who was a, a key pivotal person of making that uh, universal product code. All right. And then he's an Edomite because his actual man is an Edomite and uh, the, the number of his name, each uh, uh, each name. That he has because he has a first name, middle name, last name, right? And each of those names has six letters in it. George, six letters. Joseph, six letters. Laura, six letters. 666, six, six, right? But then there's also a system, universal product code to buy and sell. All right? It says he causes all to receive a, a mark, C-H-I-P, under the government of the beast, and his associates, these other nations that have to come uh, under this this banner, this bracket, the whole world has to come under it because it's a new uh, industrial revolution. The fourth, what the fourth industrial revolution, everybody has to get on board, just as they had to for the, the last three previous industrial revolutions that changed the world and the way we do things, or the way this world does things. All will be given a CHIP. Without the CHIP. One will not be able to participate in the economy. No one may buy or sell except one who has the CHIP of his name under the system of Esau Edom. A bullet point one, since the ancient Greek word for mark, which is karagma or charagma, isn't generally applied to people. Some have taken this as a symbolic mark, which is not symbolic, it's literal, but a literal mark is or CHIP is uh, uh, needed to buy or sell is certainly conceivable and practical, which means it can actually happen. It's being done now. You got Elon uh, with the brain and you got them uh, in certain soldiers and in Sweden and these other places in the hands already to, to, to go through doors, open your car door, buy snacks, go to work, make transactions. A bullet point two, the technology to give the people a CHIP that enables them to buy and sell in the electronic economy is available. There are many different ways it could happen, and such programs are proposed and tested constantly. So there it is. That's the proof. There you go. Even the scholars know. Come on now. The rest of you clowns that are not uh, speaking on this. The Lord is going to destroy you for your lies and your madness. You're going to be beaten with many stripes and the Lord ain't going to have mercy on you clowns, demons, because you lying to his people. Those are his people. All right. Those are his sheep that you're meant to feed, whether they get it as of the Lord. If they, if they don't get it, that's of the Lord again. They get it as of the Lord. They don't get it as of the Lord. At least you did your job. We're doing our job. We're blowing the trumpet. We're wiping the blood off our hands. All right. Before you clowns lying to get some weak ass money that, that's coming to nothing, that you're through. And the Most High is going to destroy you straight up, up and down, just like that. Damn demons, man. Even Esau, the, the devil is goddamn self knows. But yeah, you got these, you black people. That's what I'm going to say, just like that. You black, ugly people. Because when I say black, I mean everything, all what it actually means is ugly, bad. Nothing good, dark, you people, man. Cause hey, I love Israel, Yasha Allah. All right, from Judah on down to Issachar, that's my people. But you black people, you niggas in these other groups, man. You ninjas, and you Latin speaking ninjas too, and you you featherhead ninjas that's in these other groups that's lying. The hey, Lord gonna destroy you. All right, straight up. He's already destroying you, idiots. He's already breaking down your groups. He's already having mass hysteria among your ranks. And he's going to finish you off. And that's going to be a beautiful thing. But without further ado, I'm going to play the last clip and close this thing out. Giving all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai. 
Hashem Rakah Kodash, by whom we do function, double honors unto my apostles, my elders, and my teachers, a great millstone that are ruling well, and continue to do so. Salutations, peace, and blessings unto the hopeful elect that house of David. To you brothers out there finding this good fight of faith, keep it up. To you sisters doing that which has become no women, shalom, and to those that are addicted unto this ministry, I say, shalom. I'll read these last few scripts, play the clip, close out. Second Edges 16 and 74. Here, O ye, my beloved, another name for the elect, saith the Lord Yahweh, Bashimal Shah, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh Bashimal Shah is your guide, and the guide of them who keep my commandments. But you got to, these commandment keepers, laws, statutes, commandments. But you about to get cut into your flesh, which is against our law. Uh, uh, take heed or or pray homage to another God, which is against our law. Are right, you going to put a stumbling stone in front of your neighbor, which is against our law? Okay. Do all things contrary to the law, but yeah, you for the law. Get the hell up out of here, man. You're going to commit adultery, which is against our law, but you're going to do it uh, uh, spiritually by getting this CHIP and not trusting in the Lord. So you bring in a whole bunch of laws. Then you don't acknowledge the son. You don't acknowledge the lamb that shall take away the sins from the world, the world of Israel, beginning with the hopeful leg. You don't even acknowledge him. So you, you're off right there. You're through. So you, 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 you dudes, you other ca characters, man, you're going to be completely cut off and you're done. You have no God. You're done. You're out of there. You're going to be lost. You're going to be like the blind reaching for the, for the wall in the noonday. But you're going to be done. It says, and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, going into the rules, what's in the scriptures, saith the Lord, Yahweh, Shemashah, power, let not your sins weigh you down. See, because we know we have a, a high priest ever in the heavens and his blood covers us. Even if our, in our slippers, he covers us. Now, coming to this final test, we have to trust in the Lord and do what he tells us to do. All right. This is the sin that the Lord is not going to forgive. You take it, you're dead. That's how the Lord is going to love you, is when he kills you. But he, hey, don't take it. All right, because we understand what was awaiting us uh, uh, by enduring, by holding out. The Lord is going to have us. He's going to keep us, as we read earlier. And let not your iniquities lift up themselves. So with that, I'm going to bring out the clip and close this thing out. Shalom. Okay, I can got the clip and back. Let me read these last two. Going into the two thirds. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins and covered with their iniquities, like as a field is covered over with bushes, and the path thereof covered with thorns, that no man may travel through. It is left undressed. See, the Lord ain't gonna be dealing with you. You're you're good for nothing. Just like the fig tree that he cursed that bear no fruit. You bear no fruit, you two thirds, the Lord is gonna leave you to burn you. That's all you're gonna be good for. You bear no fruit. You're just some withered old branches and sticks. You have no life because life is in him. And you don't have him. You don't have the true vine, Yahweh Shai. So you're going to wither away and die. You're going to trust in Esau, Edom. He's going to wither away and be destroyed. It is left undressed and it is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. And with that, I'm going to leave you. Shalom, giving all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh Bashim Al Shai Bashim Rakakudash before this lesson. Those when you have been edified to the next time I say Shalom. On to the next one. Shalom.